All right, thanks for joining us again. And I still have right here with me, I'm Bruce Amodio, the CRO Invest Data Consulting. Uh, thank you once again for being here with us. Thank you. And I still have with us, uh, we still have with us, uh, Kasim Garuba. Thank you once again for uh, staying with us. You're welcome. Okay, well, uh, today, right now, we're looking at the other financial institutions uh, Q3 earnings. We are doing their sector and comparative analysis. So we're starting from the turnover now, and uh, we have uh, three companies that we're looking at, UCAP, that's United Capital, African Prudential, and NPF Microfinance. So starting with uh, United Capital 2022, we have 14.54 billion Naira. And in 2021, 11.32 billion Naira. The percentage change there, 28.40. For African Prudential, 2.96 billion Naira. And then 2021, 2.44 billion Naira. The percentage change there, 21.44. And then for NPF, uh, that's Nigeria Police Force Microfinance, 4.72 billion Naira in 2022. And in 2021, 4.33 billion Naira. The percentage change there, 8.93. Well, uh, to review this, I'd like to start with uh, Ambrose Amodion. Yeah, I would say for the earnings so far released to the market, I would say these numbers are impressive. You know, but we have to see the big uh, you know, you know, cap and also call them the big boys in the market, the life of ETH, MTN, you know, the first year banks. But for me, the big players who are institutional investors, they are yet to take move in the market. That is why you see, despite this positive number we are seeing, the market is still oscillating, trying to kind of uh, rebound, but still weak. But I believe that the more we see this earnings, because most you know, institutional investors and the fund managers are keeping cash to watch what is happening in the market. Like one of my colleagues said that, you know, the time value of money is staying uh, six months and then three and six four days. We can see the difference. For that, they are looking for those companies that are able to post numbers that will give insight that they sustain their you know, first, second quarter, no positive number, which is likely to also repeat itself at the end of this quarter. Don't forget that the end of the year comes a lot of seasonality that yeah. also boosts their what their number for the last quarter of the year. This also support the final number for the year, and that also gives them insight where they should put them. I believe that yes, market will be double. Those that have the fund when they start coming, despite they are not they are not foreign investors for now. But when the PFA looking at what the numbers are saying, the dividend you are seeing and capital projection in addition to that, they might likely come back to the market. That is why the people come and say. Third quarter result is likely to be the, the kind of the, the, you know, respite for the market as we speak now because if those that things don't start coming back, in the next four to five weeks we'll be seeing oscillation position for the end of the year and also you know, dividend period in the first quarter of 2020, 2023. For me, looking at the number for coming from um, United Capital, it's a sign that yes, those companies that are in that uh, other financials are really doing well. Also, you could look at the cost relation was others are looking at diesel and all those things. You no, know, but this sector look at their, you know, their, their what we call a uh, profit margin, and also their top line. It says that they are eating to another market or expanding their business or introducing new product. For for me, it's a good thing for for the market. All right, uh, Mr. Kurfi, let's have your thought very quickly on this before we move on to profit after tax and the other indices. Well, I'm delighted in view of the fact that these companies that have declared their results are financial services, so they do not likely going to benefit for the inflation. Yet, they perform better than the inflation. And that gives the investors confidence that one, they can sustain whatever dividend they pay last year, they can sustain it, and they can even do more. And in view of this, I tell you that uh, capital market is the best to go because by the time you start hearing from the manufacturers who benefited from the inflation, from the cost of production, you will see that they are turned over and the profit after uh, after tax and before tax will all grow ahead of the inflation because they benefited from the cost of inflation. So therefore, it all gives us the confidence that if financial services can meet up this one, then manufacturing services will do better. Because most of them, they benefited from even the inflation. All right. Uh, I'd like to um, once again welcome Mokhtar Mohammed. Thanks for joining us again, Mokhtar. Afternoon. Okay, so very quickly, we are looking at uh, the earnings of these other financial institutions. We started with their turnover, and now we're moving on to the profit after tax. And we have our three companies, United Capital, that's UCAP, Africa Prudential, NPF, Microfinance. So starting with UCAP, our 2022 Q3 figures, 7.71 billion naira. That's profit after tax. And then in 2021, 5.96 billion naira. 
percentage change 29.34. The African Prudential 1.28 billion Naira in 2022 and in 2021 1.15 uh, billion Naira and then the percentage change there being 11.93. For NPF microfinance, uh, we had uh, 639.16 million naira in 2022, and in 2021, 766.17 million naira. The percentage change there being minus 16.58. Uh, Moktao, talk to us. What's happening, especially to the last one, NPF microfinance? Talk to us about this. I think that's um, that's what we need to look at. That's why we are. I, for one, will be excited to see the results of the first tier, the tier one banks, and also, like I said, FCNV and Fidelity. Uh, what you see happening to the microfinance bank is, uh, I think, the non-performing loans has gone up, and so it affected their profit margin. So uh, I, I think that will be the challenge going forward. Let's see, because of the um, um, difficult um, climate, especially the hike in rate, and so most of all these companies that are collecting on these loans might not be able to meet up. They may have to do restructuring of their debt profile going forward. So uh, it, what we are scared of is to see the non-performing loans also jacking up a little, but I, I don't expect it to be too much. But for the microfinance bank, I think um, most of their customers are the um, um, little, little um, person that comes here to collect money to do one trade or the other. And then if you look at um, also the exchange rate volatility, you look at the microeconomy issues, you look at the inflation pressures on goods and services, and most Nigerians also have reduced in the numbers of things they purchase. Some of them you used to purchase two, you purchase one now, and you wait until that one is finished before you go to get one, because your earning power has not improved. Yeah. So definitely that will be affecting um, some of these um, um, businesses that normally collect loan and that's what will affect their payments. And I think for me, that is what is responsible for the numbers we've seen there. And also high costs, also in terms of uh, high costs of, uh, by, by the price of, um, most of them are on diesel 24 hours, the price of diesel also have gone up. If you look at uh, most of the, even the tier one banks in the, in the, in the half year results, uh, most of them, their costs went up because of um, issues um, like this, uh, especially in the area of uh, energy energy issue. So definitely, I think all that has contributed to what we see in the, uh, in the microfinance bank. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Ambrose, uh, let's have your thought. Yeah, for me, looking at the, the three companies that we're just looking at, the PAT, who is the profit after tax, that really tells you what investor will get at the end of the day. There's improvement in the... Uh, your cap and Africa Prudential, that is a sign that investors in that company are rest assured, depending on from them. But for me, on this one, I can say you can go ahead and hold your position, even accumulate more, because we expect that they will pay dividend, nothing less than what they pay. Additionally, they can even grow their payout. We saw what uh, UCAP paid the last year, about 150 kubo. The other one, uh, Africa Prudential, around 50 kubo. And on the strength of their figure, they're likely to sustain, even pay more. We're not expecting them less than what they did last year. That is investor that price has also have pulled back to make these uh, stocks cheaper and also attractive for, for investors putting value on the table for them. And for me, it's a good uh, beginning for any season. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Karaba, let's have your thought finally before we move on to the earnings per share. Well, as I have said earlier that uh, they all did well, but we are expecting to see more in the other sectors. As you have said it earlier, that the cost effect of the diesel affected most of their earnings, and that is why they have gone down. And then forget these are uh, financial services. So they don't have anything to benefit where there is devaluation of Naira and where the cost of production. But for the manufacturing sector, which we are expecting their result, it will be entirely different. They were able to push the cost and because they acquire this at a lower cost, because of the valuation of Naira, you see that they have made gain, both in terms of profitability and in terms of the valuation of the Naira. And all these add together to make their profitability much better than what we are seeing in the previous year. So we are expecting a wonderful result from most of the manufacturing sectors. All right. Well, still on this, let's look at the earnings per share for UCAP. Uh, 
one naira 29 uh, kobo and then for african prudential 64 kobo and then for npf microfinance we have 12 kobo this is the earning uh, the earnings per share uh, talk to us about this ambrose especially for ucap yeah for those that are looking for dividend uh, you know stock you look at the earnings that are being you know pushed to the market and those that look at capital position to look at the welfare the pay ratio to know how long you want to, to recoup your money for me i believe that the figure we are seeing or the numbers we are seeing are very very okay despite all this happening in the economy the, the increasing uh, you know headwinds here and then the economy we are seeing this number it's an encouragement for investors to know that yes until the end of the any season then we will not know whether these numbers will tell us if our gdp will still sustain a positive but the one we are seeing so always giving us a signal that we might see also a positive gdp for q3 if that is a sustain, that's a good sign for the market, they will now be looking for work. But for me, this is a good number for those that are looking for dividend income. Looking at uh, your cap having a one naira, you no know, 20, 20, 29, 29 kobo for, for third quarter, you can really kind of uh, project at the end of the year. We expect that you no know, one naira 70 or one naira 80 kobo, and they can afford to pay the 150 they pay last year, even you know, 160. For me, it's a good one for investors. And this is, but like I said earlier, that the, the, the four managers are keeping cash and some uh, investors. For managers looking at opportunity, once the opportunity will start cashing in, I'm telling you, as we see more number, you see how the market will be changing. All right, that's interesting. So, uh, uh, Mr. Mukhtar, let's have your take on this one. Well, uh, in as much as I agree with uh, the two gurus in the in the house, I I only want to say that sometimes perception is really what drives the market. Uh, sometimes the numbers are good, but the perception, sometimes, especially. Uh, when you look at the economy, normally don't make us see the value in some of these companies earning because if this result have come out and yet we are not seeing the kind of percentage move that we've seen sometimes when this result comes out, you see the, the stock start um, going down. Sometimes you see investors are already pricing what the, uh, 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 the expected um, price is supposed to be and the expected dividend. And you don't see this kind of uh, movement that we see. But when you look at the result, definitely you cap stand out and again that's a company that since they are coming to the stock market they've been paying dividends consistently improving on their dividend um they started with one naira they went as high as 150 the last time but will they go further than that i i think uh, because of the economy situation because tactically uh, the world economic is, is in recession and you want to have more liquidity especially to take advantage of some good investment that will come up uh, because of the recession and uh, so I, I think it's a good one but i i don't expect them i'm not too as optimistic as uh, mr ambrose to say that they will be above 150. Uh, i think they might just maintain that 150 for now um, trying to see how they can use the um, keep the remaining liquidity in their reserve to take advantage either to grow their business or to go into new areas that I think opportunity will be after the economy starts its gradual recovery. All right. Uh, Mr. Curfew, talk to us. Do you think they will go above that 150 or what are your own thoughts? I don't see them going above that. It's likely maybe for African prudential. But don't forget that you can always perform wonderfully in the last quarter of the year. If you look at their performance in the last quarter of the year, you can say that if they repeat the same, they can much exceed far ahead of where they are. And if they so, they can decide to pay higher than what they have paid last year. But from our experience, they paid from one naira, they moved to one naira Kikobo. If there is any, it may be marginal, maybe to 160, 165. But I don't see much leapfrog jump for the dividend of UCA. For the African Prudential, I'm not surprised if they pay higher than last of the previous year, because remember, they paid up to 70 Kobo, they come down to 50 Kobo. So I'm not surprised if they decided to push it up higher. And that's reflected in their prices. For the macro finance, I don't see them paying higher than what they paid last year. No. Correct. Okay. Well, you agree with him. For microfinance, you can see that they already uh, declined their result for uh, police microfinance. Yes, and also if you look at their share issue, they will grow their share issue more than even the you know, performance in their profit after tax. That means that uh, share issue, they will grow also dilute their earnings. They might not pay much. They can leave it flat to what they pay because they've added the additional share to their to their, to their share you know, in issue. That also dilute the number. For me, it might be a flat number for police microfinance. 
But let's look at uh, others like uh, Elijah said, you can personally, I don't see them paying less than 150, additional 160 or 170. But I can't see you can have shown strength. And this is one of the best run companies on the exchange. I see that they maintain that so that they will see you know, that yes, they are leading. And the investment uh, company, I call them, you know, um, investment bank in you know, uh, that name. For me, I believe that you can, can can increase their dividend to either 155 to show that, you know, okay. when you are making progress every quarter, every year, you are bound to pay out your, to show the dividend that, show investors that, yes, you really appreciate their confidence in what you are doing. Good. All right, then. Price to earnings ratio, that's the PE ratio for United Capital, 8.66. African Prudential, 8.37. For NPF Microfinance, 13.25. Mr. Curfee, talk to us about this. Well, you see, uh, the, the first two have a single digit, which is okay, but the last one have a double digit, <laughs> which is a bit high yes. if you compare to where they are operating the financial sector. Most of the banks, their PE ratio are in single digit. Yes. So I can say that based on the PE ratio, UCAP is good to go, African Prudential is good to go. But for the macro panels, we need to, uh, to look at mm -hmm. it and see that if they can do it better than where they are today. But for the other two, I have no doubt for me, by the time they declare their IIN, they are likely going to go below the current PE ratio they are. Even at the current PE ratio, is good to go. Okay. Very quickly, I will move on to the book value pressure, but I think you wanted to say something, Ambrose. Yeah. Just to add to what Elijah said, okay. you know, when it comes to equity investment, there are three things better to look at. Okay. You know, whether you are in the bull market or in a bear market, the influence that company performance has on the price performance. But the major liquidity of fundamental that really you know, drive equity when in any market is liquidity. And we have seen that since increase in rate, the market is having, you know, for me, a low liquidity that was well reflected on it. If not, if it will be in the bull market, seeing you know, you can't a result, the price will have been for two or three days, four days in uptrend. But because there's no liquidity, market, despite that, a you no know, impressive number, it does have two days or a day movement. That's why I said investors should understand. That's why I said that sector and economy has about 50 to 80 percent influence on the, on the market. Why companies contribute about just 20 percent of performance? If the performance is good, as good as anything, if there's no liquidity in the market, the price will go nowhere. Whether in a bull market, in a bull market, you see it flying. In a bear market, can you add perception to this conversation? Because I remember Mokhtar was also no, talking that, about that perception. Is, that is the sentiment. And that's why I said a good trader should have what he or she is watching. Because even when the number comes to the market, you see it on the chart, how people are performing, the psychology, the perception, and the sentiment of investors in the market. Like I said, we are not having long-term investors, let me for, for 10 years. These are people that are moving liquidity from fixed income to what? to equity exactly. market, looking at opportunity and the time frame. But that is very, very important. Like I said, the time value of money is very key. That's why investors should look at between now and March. It's less than, less than six months. Why you are waiting for a fixed income to give me 15%, 14% on, on your yield and other stuff for, then for a whole year? You should look at where can I make it. And if, say by next year, we're not starting a repricing of a, or a certain of a interest rate, automatically we'll see funds coming. But I tell you, as the World Bank is going, continue hike, we we'll, we'll, we'll find a, a place that we'll start seeing a resetting of interest rate coming back. That was so attractive uh, for the equity market. All right. Well, very quickly, book value per share, starting with UCAP, that's United Capital, for Naira, 94 Kobo. African Prudential Bank, for Naira, 52 Kobo. And then for NPF Microfinance, 1 Naira, 93 Kobo. I'd like uh, Mr. Mokhtar to talk to us about this. Let's start with you. If you can hear me, Mr. Mokhtar, I'd like you to comment on the book value per share and uh, what the impact this will have or what this means for investors. All right, I guess uh, that's a connection issue right there. Well, uh, let, let's start with you then, Ambrose. Yeah, look at the, the book value. Like I said earlier in this program, the book value is more for kind of a quick you know, evaluation because it's only when a company is really going under liquidation, you before yeah. you can look at more book value. But give an insight where the price is going, whether it's a discount or at, you know, at a premium. But if you look at what the price of uh, Africa, um, UCAP is now and the, and the book value, you say this stock is really on, you know, on a premium. And that's why I say you have different model of what. You know, of evaluation and this company you can pay dividend all since it's listed on the exchange. There's a valuation my different that book value is not enough to say hey, yes because it's the book value is uh, four nine and ninety five Kobo this stock is attractively over value. As I say these are the perception of the market that in in a, in a fundamental how we call the fundamental analysis on the value 
also in equity in a technology that work called overbought and not an oversold. These are the things that you used to know to guide where the market is at a particular time or when the viewer stock is at a particular time. For me, it's not about the parameter for now, but they can do better so that um, the more they have a you know, good net asset that also further boost their, their book value per share. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mokhtar, if you can hear me now, uh, please, I'd like you to comment on this before we move on. Yeah. Uh, I, I normally jokingly tell investors that um, I'm not interested in the book value that yes, much. Yes. <laughs> I want to see what is that go to my pocket. Yes. And I go to the penny per share. That's what, that's what concerns me as an investor. Uh, but again, if you are looking at the lifeline of the, of, 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 of the um, company, then you begin to look at the book value in terms of the assets that they will have going for so you don't want to have a company that you collect dividend from this year by next year or in five years time that company is no more in existence <laughs> and i think that is the only thing that i, I looked at in terms of the book value it's good. Um, it's good. like i said um, the the numbers look good i still believe that um, the price as it stands now is being driven by perception uh, people are still not so convinced with the economy and i think a lot of um, investors or a lot of nigerians are so scared that they want to be looking at their money than investing their money. <laughs> so that's why you are not seeing the kind of bullish one. And people are not too um, happy with the way this um, outgoing administration have handled the economy, especially in terms of policies. And um, this, uh, well, I'm not saying this administration alone, but most administrations have not really looked at the stock market and say, how can we help this market? How can we? Okay, the last time we have a finance minister that looked at the stock market and said, come, stocks brokers, let's sit down and talk. Let's see how we can help you. People was the um, um, Ngozi Onkonje Wela when he was the minister. After that, we've not seen any of them that have seen the market as something that they need to look at and see how they can help the market to attract that foreign direct investors. Uh, uh, if I could uh, remember one time the CBN was talking about, look, we are not interested uh, in what investors happen. We are only interested in our clients, <laughs> which are the customers. So when a bank goes down, we think of our customers. We don't think about the investors. So or some, some of these things uh, in, in an economy that is now uh, driven by a lot of fear. A lot of people remember some of these things. I would rather just not invest their money than to, to keep investing. I think, um, by and large, it's the perception that is going to drive the market in the coming days, especially if it is positive, the market will remain positive. But in the long run, like we or everybody have said here today, the market will be more of a value for any shrewd investor than to just keep watching your money go down with the inflation that we are battling in the country at the moment. All right. Well, very quickly, let's move on to the profit margin now, starting with uh, United Capital UCAP. 53.04. African Prudential, 43.43. NPF Microfinance, 13.54. And uh, for return on equity, that's ROE. United Capital, 26.05. African Prudential, 14.28. And NPF Microfinance, 6.15. Uh, Mr. Kurfi, I'd like you to tie these two together and talk to us about it. Well, uh, honestly speaking, this is an excellent performance. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> when you get 53% at the profit margin, what it means that for every one naira they earn, 53 goes to the shareholders. Yes. And this is excellence. You hardly get it anywhere. So 43% for every one naira earned by African Prudential, 43 Kobo is going to the shareholder. I can tell you if there is any company to invest this other company because <laughs> you are sure for every one error you give them, you know what is coming to you. Exactly. <laughs> and you can hardly get it as well. For the macro finance, yes, I'm not surprised, but also has to do the function of their issue share that would bring it down. But for the first two, it's an excellence. And I can tell anybody, good margin, go for it. Because good margin, you know what is coming to you. And this is an excellence. But when we look at the return of investment, they are not doing bad. Because honestly speaking, they have passed most of the indicators. 25% anywhere, anytime is good to go. A company that has a return of 25% on the asset is a company to be used. The other one, 14% is not bad, but for the 6% is very poor. 
<laughs> I believe that, uh, like what Mukhtar said, the bad loan, and we wait to see what is happening, especially this time when Moody decided to downgrade 10 oh, of our banks yeah. by grading. And what it means that it will be additional cost for them to source support outside. Because once you are downgraded, you have to pay higher to earn anything abroad, and that will also affect. As regard to generally to the market, I can say that what kill our market is margin trading. Globally, anywhere you see the equity market, you see margin trading. Today, Forex is shining because of margin trading. Margin trading is part and parcel of the equity market. But in the Nigerian facto, we didn't have it because CBN did not allow it. They just decided to take it away by saying that you cannot use margin facility from financial instrument. And financial instrument controls 70% of our market activity and control more than 70% of the market liquidity. So if you remove it, it's just like the, it doesn't exist. Allow the margin. At this current time, our market will go up, especially when we don't have foreign investors. If you allow margin, people are willing to take the risk. I'm one of them, and I can tell you that you will make money. Okay. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I would have asked you more questions, but we really need to go. So in closing now, Bruce, let's have your thoughts. Yeah, what well, I would say, that, like you said, we need the market makers in the market. We only have market makers by name in Nigeria. They are not functional. That means NSC need to do you know, most of their job. Like one of my colleagues says here, yeah, NSC is busy introducing a product, even without educating Nigerians on the product they are trading. That's why those products they are introducing them, we are not seeing the part on the market. Today, we have a derivative, we have a FT, you know, you know, EF, uh, FT, uh, what was the uh, ST trading okay. traded phone, ETF. We have a lot of uh, commodity, no, but people are not looking the world, but no education. Right. And that's the time for them. We need to, to, need to go and bring here. what active uh, world market makers All to right. make the market active. Thank you so much, yeah. Ambrose Omodio, for sharing your thoughts with us on the show. Thanks today. for having me. All right. Well, Mokhtar Mohammed, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me with these two very wonderful analysts. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Alhaji, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. All right. Well, many thanks to you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasami Peter. Do enjoy the rest of the day. Bye for now. Enjoy the weekend.